it's not because of you. It's because of Jesus. It's not because of your goodness. It's because of His. The Bible says that a tree of life is a dream fulfilled. If you believe Jesus is God and you believe He rose from the dead, you're going to heaven. There's nothing you can do to make God love you any less. He loves you. Hi there, my name is Ben Conway. I'm the lead pastor of Tree of Life Church in Dagenham in Essex. And I'm the founder of the Tree of Life family, which is the growing network of growing churches across the United Kingdom. I believe in church planting. I believe in church growth. I believe that Jesus Christ wants to see the greatest harvest of souls in our generation in the United Kingdom that's ever, ever been seen. I believe that the darkness we're seeing in this nation is just preparation for the light that Jesus wants to reveal. For the last month now, for the last four weeks, I've been talking to you about God's glory, that Moses prayed this prayer, Lord, I want to see your glory. And I believe that prayer is in many, many of our hearts today. Lord, I want to see your glory. And so we've talked about that glory the first week. We looked at the fact that the glory of God is the goodness of God and that God's a good God. He doesn't know how to be bad. He's good. The second week we looked at the fact that glory is the name of God and that God's name is I am. God always is who he is. He's always the healer. He's always our peace. He's always our shepherd. He's always our provider. And the more we know about God's name, the more we'll see his glory. And we really need to take the name of God and preach it to the nations and preach it to our nation that people would know that God is not the one who makes people sick. God's not the destroyer. You know, people say, God damn. Why is God damn so offensive? Because God is not the damner. God is the blesser. He's the Lord, our righteousness. He's the Lord, our peace. And so we need people to know the name of God so they can know who God is. And then we talked about the fact that Jesus said that if you believe, you'll see the glory. And he was talking in the context of raising Lazarus from the dead. If you believe, you can receive the glory of God. You can receive resurrection power. And then last week, we looked at the early church and how God gave them the glory. And he didn't give it all to Peter. He gave everyone their own tongue. And I believe last week, something very, very powerful happened. That it was more than just a good teaching. But as you watch the program, I believe God was touching people. And that fire was cleansing people and changing their lives. And if that's happened to you, if you know you're changed because of Tree of Life TV, we'd love to hear from you. The numbers right there on the screen and we would love to hear we'd love to hear your story do you know the bible says that we overcome the devil with the power of the blood and the word of our testimony and the more testimonies i have the easier it is for me to tell the devil hey devil shut up we should be on tv we should be out here changing lives we should be talking about these things and uh, it's important that you share your testimony with us and anyone who calls us anyone who emails us will get your free cd and bless you with the word of god because we love you and we want your best we love you we want you to hear the word we want you to grow and mature and be fully equipped to do every good work that you are part of this army with us what i called last week the hurricane generation that we're going to change this nation for the better no doubt about it and i believe that what god's doing with these tv programs is he's building a tribe he's building a group of people who are learning the truth from god's word about the goodness of god and we ended up last week we got to where peter had just started to preach and where peter said in the last days i'll pour my spirit on all flesh and we'll go right back to there in Acts chapter 2 and we'll look at that and we'll expound on that today that what is God's will for the church 
What is God's will for you as a Christian? And the first thing is this, God wants to pour his spirit out on you and also onto all flesh. Do you know all flesh doesn't mean all born again people? All flesh means every single person. You know, we shouldn't get upset or shocked when we hear stories of the spirit of God coming upon Muslims and Sikhs and Buddhists and atheists and Muslims having dreams in the middle of the night and coming to Christ. God wants to pour his spirit on all flesh. But why does he want to do that? What is the will of God? It shall be in the last days, God says, this is Acts 2.17, it shall be in the last days, God says, I'll pour forth of my spirit on all mankind, your sons and daughters shall prophesy. So one of the hallmarks of a spirit-filled church is the prophetic. Sons and daughters shall prophesy. And the Bible says that the word of prophecy, 1 Corinthians 14, verse 3, is given to comfort, and encourage and uh, edify the church or comfort, exhort and edify. And so you see one of the things that's happened is in the Old Testament, in the Old Covenant, only very few people could prophesy. Isaiah could prophesy, Jeremiah could prophesy, but not everybody, only one or two people. And when they prophesied, they prophesied in accordance, in line with the Old Covenant. Now, the Old Covenant is a covenant of works. It's a covenant which you have to do certain things to have God be pleased with you. And if you didn't do them, God was not pleased with you. You can see that very clearly in, let's say, Deuteronomy 28. It says, if you fully obey everything God says, then God will make you the head and not the tail. God will love you. God will exalt you. God will bless you. God will bless your barns, your livestock, your children. But if you don't do that, then you're cursed. And that curse is going to wipe you out. That curse is going to cause you to be poor, to be broke, to be sick, to be hungry, to be thirsty, to be alone. And uh, you don't want those things on the curse. So you'd have to obey God. But the problem was people couldn't obey God very well. People didn't obey God very well. So a lot of the Old Testament prophets are prophets of judgment. You failed to obey God. This nation's going to come and take over. This nation's going to come and attack. Locusts are going to come and destroy your food. It's not going to go well with you because you haven't lived for God. And what's tragic, I see, is people look at those Old Testament prophets and they try and drag those guys into the New Testament and they try and uh, try and make that's what a New Testament prophet should be like. No, a New Testament prophet's different. A New Testament prophet's never a standalone guy. He's never on his own. He's surrounded by a team. God set in the church. Jesus Christ gave to us some apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers. So so if a prophet is not working with apostles and evangelists and teachers and pastors, that's not a New Testament prophet. And um, he's there to equip the saints to do the works of ministry, Ephesians 4.12. So if a prophet is not helping other people hear God better, if he's just coming into town and hearing God for everyone, or even worse, and this is happening, this is absolutely happening, charging money to give someone a prophetic word when Jesus said, freely you receive, freely give, that's outrageous. And if that's happening, that's not a New Testament prophet. You can just write Ichabod all over that because Jesus said, freely give, freely receive. I, I went to a conference last year and they wanted to charge me money to give me a prophetic word. And what was even funnier was the guy they wanted me to pay was a guy who left our church out of strife and out of hurt and out of foolishness. And I thought, I don't want to, this guy to prophesy over me for free, let alone pay him money to do it. But that's what's happening in the body of Christ. And no, a true prophet equips the saints to do the works of ministry. He equips you to hear God better for yourself. And you leave the meeting of a true prophet of God, not going, oh, uh, that prophet was amazing. I, he told me everything. No, you leave a meeting of a true prophet of God saying, Jesus Christ is amazing. Jesus Christ is wonderful. I've never heard Jesus like I've heard Jesus before. And so we need to be like that. We need to get involved with these things, what is true. And the true gift of prophecy isn't to judge the church or condemn the church or criticize the church. It isn't a railing, angry voice. No, no. Jesus Christ has brought peace between men and God. And the word of prophecy is to encourage and to edify and to exhort.
and to build up the church. That word edify is where we get the English word edifice, a building. It means to build a building. So prophetic words are there to help build the building. If they're trying to rip down the building, we had a lady come and give a prophecy once and her prophecy was, you're all a bunch of fake Christians. You don't really know God. How many of you know that doesn't help us build the building? That's a fake word. And we judge that as fake. The Bible says test the prophets and we tested that and that is not God speaking and so we told that lady that she needed to be quiet or, or, or not speak on the church not prophesy until we were certain her discipleship had got to the point where she knew that if she was going to prophesy it had to be a word that helps build the building and um, that's so important and so God wants us to prophesy but not prophesy trying to tear down this and tear down that but to help build the building we should be open to the prophetic we should not despise the prophetic that's what the scriptures say first Thessalonians 5 do not despise the prophetic we should be open to prophecy and anybody can prophesy now obviously if you're in a large church you're in a large gathering you know let's say you're a church of 500 you know, even if everyone got 30 seconds to prophesy on a Sunday morning, that's still four hours. That's not going to work, and you're not going to remember it. But it doesn't mean everyone can prophesy every single service. But, you know, in the small groups, people can prophesy one over another and speak those words of life one over another. You should be in an environment where the prophetic is happening. You should be in an environment where sons and daughters are prophesying. That's why Jesus poured his spirit on the church. But that prophecy shouldn't just be being happening. It should also be pastored and should be led and, 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 and so it doesn't go over, into the, 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 over the banks into crazy waters. You know, how many of you know some crazy stuff happens in the name of prophetic? And um, so you need to be in a place where there is prophetic, but the prophetic is pastored. And, uh, you know, it's, it's not always easy to find that kind of place. But uh, praise God, we, we were seeing that in Tree of Life. And praise God, we're not the only ones. There's lots of churches out there where the prophetic is happening and is being pastored. You see, the Bible says, let all things be done decently and in order and what I find is a lot of churches that go on about decently and in order they're not letting all things be done they're the kind of churches where no one's being healed no one's being prophesied over no one's being supernaturally encouraged no one's raised from the dead no one's life's changed you know the blind aren't seeing the deaf aren't hearing the lame aren't walking and the church is going on and on about order well there is order in a cemetery but God doesn't want us to live in a cemetery God wants there to be life life in what we live in and uh, so it's only when there's life we have to say decently and in order but before we have worry too much about decently in order we need to worry about the fact let all things be done we need to be more, i'd be far more concerned if i was in a church where <laughs> there was no gifts of the spirit where there was no supernatural miracles supernatural healing supernatural life i'd be far more concerned about that than be concerned about oh it's a little bit indecent sometimes it's a little bit out of order sometimes sometimes people get a little bit excited about these things and get a little bit crazy we can have a little bit of crazy without going off into crazy waters and without going off into stuff that's going to put people off burn out people hurt people judge people condemn people and we can keep the prophetic flowing in a way that's not correcting but encouraging and developing and building the building are you saying there's not a place for correction there is a place for correction but that place is not within the gift of the prophetic that place is in the word of god the word of god is given to us to correct us and to admonish us that's 2 timothy 3 16 so the place of that is a teacher's job to do that not the prophet the prophet is there to to help us inspire us and release us into the prophetic gifts and um, God wants a prophetic church where your sons and daughters are prophesying where young men are seeing visions and old men are dreaming dreams you you cannot look at the book of Acts here and deny that what Jesus Christ wants is a supernatural church on planet earth or let's be very specific because right now my heart is burning for the United Kingdom God wants supernatural churches in the United Kingdom where sons and daughters prophesy, where young men see visions, where old men dream dreams, where what's happening is not natural, it's supernatural. And God wants you to be part of that. Yes, sir. There's a man watching this program right now. You're a young man. You're, I reckon you're in your early 20s. You might even be late teens. And um, your name is Jason. I can see you very clearly right now, Jason. You're wearing a T-shirt, and it's like an orangey color. 
and God has called you to go to Bible school. I don't know which Bible school he's called you to, but I know he's called you to go to Bible school. So he's been specific. God has told you which one. And you have put him off. You've avoided that call because it's just inconvenient to you. But God is telling you right now that your highest and best life will be found following him and not just following your peers. And you've got to break away from some of your peers because some of your friends, it's not that they're into all sorts of evil things. It's not they're into the dreadful things, but they're just living a sub supernatural level. They're just living at such a normal level. They're pulling you down to normal. And you know you've encountered God. You know you've heard God speak to you. You know there's more to life than what you're going through. So I'm telling you now, this year you get the application sorted and you get yourself to Bible college and you're going to enter into a stream of life. Don't be worried about the provision. God will supernaturally provide for you. This is something God has called you to do and God will always provide for his call or let me say it like this whenever you walk in the vision there's always provision the provision is for the vision in fact what happened to you Jason is that God gave you supernaturally money to start this process off it wasn't enough but it was a start and you squandered it you get you spent it on things that were not the vision and God totally forgives you God is not holding that against you but you know that happened and that's just part of the confirmation that I'm speaking to you the word of God right now and you need to do this because your heart and your passion needs to be refined and equipped at Bible school because God is calling you to be part of the supernatural church God has been putting on your hand and you're so frustrated and angry at the church right now and I understand that and I hear that but God's saying let that forgive 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 don't 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 judge people who can't see what you see because they haven't been shown what you've been shown but let me take you to the place where I can lead you I'm not even sure you're even going regularly to church right now but let me take you to the place says the Lord where I can lead you and your heart is in a place where you love the church so much that you're going to help it change and help it become free and help it be everything and you're going to walk into rooms then in your future if you follow God and you listen to God right now you're going to walk into rooms and it's almost going to be as if your face is glowing with the glory of God and people are going to be changed and warmed and heated and some of the coldest places are going to catch fire because of you and what God's called you to do you've got to take the step the time is urgent. There's an urgency to this. That's why God's calling you by name. That's why God's calling you right now. You see that, guys, that, that's a prophetic gift. That's God just using me right now in the gift of prophecy to encourage. I'm not a prophet. I'm an apostle, I'm a pastor. I plant churches and I pastor churches. That's what I do. I'm not a prophet, but I'm a son of God. And sons and daughters can prophesy and you can prophesy right now God wants to release that gift to you I'm not charging money for this I'm not charging money for a word I'm not charging money for an impartation freely give freely receive right now just as you're watching this the power of God is coming on you to prophesy to see visions to dream dreams God is going to make you and refine you this is talking to anyone listening to my voice right now part of the supernatural church of God and old men shall dream dreams even my bond slaves, both men and women, I will in those days pour forth of my spirit and they shall prophesy. So you might think I'm just a little slave. I'm the least person in my church. God wants you to prophesy. God wants you to prophesy. You might say, I'm not a very good Christian. God wants you to prophesy. God wants the least in the household to prophesy. I tell you, some of the greatest prophetic ministries and greatest healings we're going to see before our generation's out, before my generation finishes, before I go to home be with Jesus, are going to be children under the age of 10. There's going to be some little children who are going to prophesy. They're going to prophesy. They're going to prophesy. There's no way they could know what they're talking about, but they're going to flow in the Spirit of God and it's going to be glorious this is the supernatural church God wants and I will grant wonders in the sky above and signs on the earth below blood and fire and vapor of smoke now most people when they read this start thinking of the judgment of God and the end times and there's going to be blood and there's going to be fire and there's going to be smoke this is not talking
talking about war. This is not talking about death. This is Paul, uh, Paul, not Paul, Peter, sorry. Peter is prophesying about a supernatural church. And one of the signs of supernatural church is the sign of blood. People are going to have a supernatural revelation of the blood. There's going to be fire. Do you know in Paul's day, uh, Peter, sorry, I don't know why I did that. In Peter's day, right here in Acts 2, they saw the fire of God visibly touch people's heads. They saw the fire come out of heaven and come on people's heads. I'm telling you, we're going to see that in our generation. We're going to see the fire of God on people. We're going to see that vapor of smoke. The glory of God is going to be tangible and visible to our generation. At times, the glory of God is going to come on a place and it's going to just be like a glorious smoke that's going to fill the room and there's going to be healings and miracles and resurrections and restorations of relationships and marriages and families and the people, the lost, are going to say, what is this? And it's going to be a sign and a wonder. And just like in Peter's day, 3,000 people were added in one day. What can God do today? What can God do right now? I'm telling you, God is real and these things are real and what God has done here he will do again and the glory of the latter temple will be greater than the glory of the former temple didn't say the latter temple will be greater I don't believe any of us will ever be as great as Peter was as James and John were as Paul was but I believe we're going to see more glory than they saw we're going to see more exciting things than they saw we're going to see more people raised from the dead than they saw we're going to see more miracles than they saw we're going to see more salvations than they saw is it possible is it possible in our generation in the United Kingdom these could happen well Jesus said if you believe you'll see the glory of God in John 11 if you believe you'll see the glory of God so I'm asking you today will you believe with me will you stand with me we're going to see the glory of God we're going to see fire in our churches we're going to see vapor of smoke the glory cloud the Shekinah of God in our services but how does it start it starts when we start to prophesy it starts when we start to speak it out it starts when we start to declare it we are going to see God's glory in our midst in our generation no I'm not talking about Africa I'm not talking about America I'm not talking about Asia I'm talking about Europe I'm talking about the United Kingdom I'm talking about where you live your city your town your community we are going to see the glory of the living God, <coughs> the glory of Jesus Christ himself in the midst of us. Blood and fire and vapor of smoke. That's not talking about war or death or destruction. That's talking about the power of God that's going to invade and manifest in your church, in Tree of Life Church, in whatever church you go to. It's going to happen. <coughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're not excited, I don't know what to say to make you excited. Hans Warmack says, if that doesn't set you on fire, your wood must be wet. And if what I'm saying isn't setting you on fire, it's setting me on fire. I'm so excited right now. You know, I cried all the way here in my car. I just cried as God started to sh tell me to share about the glory and start talking about the glory. And I got so excited so excited I'm just I'm just expecting lives to be changed like never before I'm expecting you never to be the same again and look at this look at this oh this is so exciting the sun will be turned into darkness and again we look at that as God's gonna wipe out the sun and smash the stars up no 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 the sun will be turned to darkness you know if I have a little candle just just here just put it here on the table I've got a little candle and that candle's there there's two ways I can turn that candle into darkness. Firstly, I could blow it out and it's gone, it's done dark. Or secondly, I could get, uh, you know, one of these, they, they, they measure torches now in lumens, don't they? And uh, a lumen is the equivalent of one candle. Imagine I had a million lumen torch and I turned that on behind that candle as then the, the light of a million candles shining what does that mean it means you can, can't see my candle anymore my candle's gone to darkness my candle's now dark you can't see it anymore because the light that's shining is so great and so much greater than that candle you can't even see it i'm telling you the light of god is going to manifest so 
fully on planet Earth, it'll be like there's no sun because the glory of God will be even brighter than that. The Bible says there's no sun in heaven. It says that we're lit by the, the, the light of the Lord. And I believe we're going to have church services where they're lit by the light of the Lord, just like when the high priest would go to the Holy of Holies. You know, when he was in the, the holy place, the, the outside place, the outer court, there's three tents for him to go and encounter God. And that outer tent, he's got natural sunlight. There's no roof. He's got natural sunlight. And then he goes into the inner court or the holy place and there's light from a candle but when he steps when that high priest on that day of atonement would step into the holy of holies there would actually be light not the light of the sun not the light of the candle but the light of God himself the Shekinah glory of God was glowing in that room he could still see because the light of God was in that place and I'm telling you now as our churches as we come from being outer court churches place of <coughs> what happened in the outer court two things happened in the outer court washing and sacrifice and I see most churches are still that place. We're still washing. We're still sacrificing. We're still sacrificing. We're still washing. And our church services are just over and over. Activity, wash, make me clean, make me clean, make me clean. I've got to give everything to Jesus. Give everything to Jesus. No, once you've washed, once you're washed, you're clean. You need to wash your feet again, like Jesus said to Peter. But he said, I've washed you. You're clean. You're clean. If you're born again today, you're clean. And you've made a sacrifice. You are a living sacrifice. So let's move forward into the holy place. What happened in the holy place? There was bread to eat. And there was um, light from the candle, and um, there was uh, worship. There was uh, coals to worship. And churches are making that transition now. They're becoming places where we don't just look clean, we actually worship God. We actually start singing about God now instead of about singing how terrible we are. There's so many worship songs, not even worship songs. They're just singing about how terrible we are. No, come forward and lift that coal before God. Praise the Lord, all oh my soul. Start to praise God. Eat of the bread. And then as we start to do that corporately as a church, we start to come into the holy place, that place where it's just us and God. There's nothing else there but us and God. And I'm telling you now that God is going to supernaturally shine his light on us so brightly that it'll be like the sun is nothing, that everything that's happened in the past will be as nothing. Some of you have had great achievements in your life, but what God is about to do will be as will make everything else look as nothing because of the brightness of the glory of what God's going to do in your future. There's somebody watching this right now, you're 84 years old, and you have seen the glory of God. You've been involved in the charismatic renewal since it was glorious in the late 50s early 60s you've been involved in full gospel businessmen you've been involved in all sorts of glory and I'm telling you now you're, you're going to see more glory before you go home to be with the Lord that the greatest glory of your life is in your future that the glory of the latter temple is greater than the glory of the former and look when the sun will be turned down the moon into blood and again when there's great light on the earth the moon looks that red color before the great and glorious day of the Lord shall come and it shall be that everyone who calls in the name of the Lord will be saved. Why does God want to lead the church into the glory? Why does God want me to talk about the glory for the last few weeks? It's not just so you can have goosebumps. It's not just so you can have a good time. It's that you can be equipped to flow in the gifts of the Spirit, to flow in the power of God, to raise the dead, to heal the sick. Why? So that people can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. So that this nation will be saved. That this nation will know Jesus. That this nation will encounter the living God. It's time for people in this nation to know there's a God and he's not just there for a little baby baptism and he's not just there for when they want to get married he's not just there for a funeral but he's there every day of their life and that church is not just for Christmas but it's to change the world and that's what we're here for so that people can be saved oh God is about to let that glory go splashing out of the church and you're never ever ever going to be the same again hallelujah oh glory glory the glory of God is the goodness of God the glory of God is the revelation of the name of God. He is who he is. The glory of God is the resurrection power of God. The glory of God is every man gets their own tongue. And the glory of God is a supernatural church packed with supernatural Christians, not just the pastor, but everyone. And that's what God's calling you to. Give us a call. We give a free CD to everyone who gives us a call or email. We love to get the word of God out to you. If you've got any questions, give us a call. If you want prayer, our guys will pray with you on the telephone and we'll believe with you we believe we'll see your prayer answered in Jesus name man it's been a joy to be with you today it has been a joy to be in your living room remember if God is for us who can be against us no one can no one can stand against you because God's on your side God loves you God is going to do great things for you this week it's going to be a week of awesome things happening have an awesome week amen you any less. He loves you.